So today I want to talk about confession before we have confession. And I wanted to try to give you another perspective on confession, kind of my side of things. Now keep in mind that I wasn't born a priest. I used to make a joke that the, you know, the Pope lays eggs in the Vatican and they hatch priests and that's where we come from. But you know, the reality is, you know, priests are people, they have a family, they grow up, they, you know, they can get into trouble as kids, whatever. And, you know, so I didn't, you know, spend, uh, it's not like I spent my whole life on this side of the confessional or on this side of the pulpit. I was out there where you are today. So I'm going to give you an example of something that happened to me um, that has kind of stayed in my mind to try to help me make sure that I am a good priest in the confessional. So when I was about, I don't know, 15, 16, back in Jersey, I went to confession to this priest. And, um, you know, most of the time people come into confession, they're feeling kind of down about their sins, they're feeling guilty, kind of broken, so you don't want to be hard on them. You want to up, be uplifting, you want to help them. Just as Jesus was. Jesus was a good confessor. The woman today that was crying at his feet, he encouraged her, told her she was forgiven. The one that was caught in adultery, you know, uh, you know he says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. So, so um, the priest is in there to represent God. And, uh, and that's a big responsibility. So I, I went to confession and this priest, I guess it's kind of a Jersey moment. You had a Jersey kid going to confession, a Jersey priest, which isn't necessarily the best thing. But in any event, he says to me in a very obnoxious, wise guy way, he goes, why? I was, I was like throwing up, why? And I almost gave him a wise guy answer. I almost said, well, gee, because like I want to commit as many sins as I can and get to hell as soon as possible, you know. Uh, but I didn't say that. I, I somehow, the Lord restrained my sarcastic anger, and I just said something like, man, I'm not ready for you. I'm out of here. And I walked out of the confessional. So I say that because, you know, a lot of times people are afraid when they go into confession because maybe they've heard a story about a priest who was mean or did that, this or that. You know, I think most of those guys are gone, okay? That was a generation that was a little hard. They're, you know, Father Wrath of God, for the most part, you know, is, is kind of gone now, okay? Those guys that hold, it was a different approach. So Father Mercy and Kindness should be the one that's waiting for you. I know at least that's my approach. So. When you go into confession, you're kind of afraid and embarrassed and scared to sort of spill your guts, as it were. I'm afraid on the other side. You're like, why are you afraid, Father? You got nothing to worry about. Well, I'm representing God. I'm representing the mercy and the love of God. And if I say the wrong thing, I could cause someone to turn their back on God and the church for the rest of their lives and maybe lose their soul. So yeah, that kind of makes me nervous because you know there's going to come a time when I stand <laughs> in front of God and he's going to review how well I have represented him, especially in the confessional, the tribunal of mercy. So I'm in there to give you God's forgiveness, to give you God's love, to encourage you. I'm not in there to give you a hard time. And yeah, there's stories floating around about this priest or that priest doing this or that. And I've experienced a little bit myself, as I just gave you a little example. But um, the biggest complaint I've heard for the most part about me is I'm too easy. I'm happy to hear that complaint. Father, you didn't give me enough penance. You, don't, you know, you're just too easy. Well, you know, I'm, I'm there to give God's forgiveness. So the thing I want to encourage you, the thing that um, when you go in there... Um, I'm just there to give you God's love and forgiveness through absolution and maybe some advice. So, I mean, the priest that said that obnoxious, why? You know, I mean, he said it kind of like that, like he was angry, like I, you know, like I, you know, committed a sin against him. I remember one of the priests, uh, Franciscan, gave a good talk one time. He said, you know, when people come in, they worry about it. He said, but they got to realize they broke God's law. They didn't break my law. I'm not there to give them a hard time, you know. And so um, the thing is, uh, when you go to confession, 
this, the way the sacrament works is you are presenting your sins. You are obligated to confess all mortal sins. Now, if it's a venial sin or a lesser sin, and you know you don't confess, it's no big deal. But if you deliberately conceal a mortal sin because you're ashamed or whatever reason, then you've made a bad confession. Then you don't receive from God's forgiveness. So you don't want to make a bad confession. So what is the common event and cause of a bad confession? People are embarrassed about sins of impurity, and they don't want to mention them. So they conceal them deliberately sometimes. If that's the case, better not to go. Or wait until you have the courage to go to confession. Because again, I'm not there to give you a hard time. I've been a priest almost 30 years. I've heard everything you can think of, and even things I couldn't even think of. I'm like, what? You know, I've heard some interesting things over the years. So um, the thing is, you know, if you have a sin of impurity by yourself, or you look at pornography, you know, you, you just go ahead and confess it. Now, sometimes people give me clues, like I'm Sherlock Holmes on a mystery trying to solve a crime. I did bad things. I looked at bad things. I'm like, yeah? What kind of bad things did you look at? You know, was it, you know, what bad thing did you do? Did you, did you hurt someone? You know, was it a sin of anger? Was it a theft? Was it impurity? You know, most of the times it's impurity. So don't be afraid to confess sins of impurity. It's not like I haven't heard it before. I'm just there to give you God's forgiveness and encourage you to try to grow closer to Christ by reducing sin in your life. So if you've committed the sin of impurity by yourself or masturbation, you confess it. If you looked at pornography, you, you looked at pornography. You mentioned that. If you've had premarital relations, which technically is called fornication, you go ahead and confess that. Premarital relations, you know. Uh, Probably none of you have committed adultery, but I mean, you know, what in that case, so somebody's got to be married to someone else and not you. So, you know, if, you know, adultery or, you know, uh, anything along those lines. So please just go ahead and do your confession. Don't hide anything and keep it back. And we don't expect you to keep a detailed log of your sins. Oh, wait a minute, let me get out my logbook, mark it down. We just commit another sin, and we get kind and number, okay? So that's why what it is, is kind and number, typing them out. What is kind? Which kind of sin? What type of sin? I lied. I stole. Um, I looked at pornography. I committed impure act by myself or with someone else. I took God's name in vain. Do we keep a logbook? No. We have a conscience, and we know maybe we did some of these things, and we confess them, but... We're supposed to confess kind in number. So if it's once, we might remember it's once or twice. But anything beyond two, you can go ahead and just say many. Because no one expects you to have a strict number. I missed Mass once, twice, or many times. Okay? And so part of the reason we want you to memorize the Ten Commandments is so you know what sin is, you know how to live your life in a way that's pleasing to God, and also you know how to confess your sins. So we're going to do a quick review. The first commandment, thou shalt have no false gods before me. So that means getting involved in tarot cards and Ouija boards and occult and, and all those kinds of things, you know, palm readers and things like that. Bad news. You don't want to do that. If you do, you confess it. So if we're, we're supposed to stay away from the false god, that means we don't worship a false god. Worship the true god, which means we're called to prayer. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Uh, and so how do we do that? Do we spend days and days without praying? No. If we don't pray every day, I don't think we're living uh, the commandment to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. So we need to pray every day. That's the first commandment. To pray every day and not get involved in the occult or false versions of religion. Second commandment, don't take God's name in vain. Third commandment. Keep the Sabbath holy. Attend Mass on Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation, unless you have a good reason. If you're sick or caring for someone who's sick or you don't have transportation, those are good reasons for missing Mass. Fourth commandment has to do with your parents. Honor your father and mother, which is the beginning of my knowledge of love of neighbor. So hopefully you're respectful to your parents, and, and uh, so that would be the fourth. The fifth commandment. So the fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill, or thou shalt not commit murder, 
So there's the big one, of course, which would be abortion. And you can be guilty of abortion if you recommend it, tell someone to go ahead and do it. If you give them money for it, arrange transportation, encourage it, you don't wanna be involved in that. So um, the other thing is getting drunk. Getting drunk is a violation of the fifth commandment or taking drugs, and I don't mean aspirin. Uh, so um, uh, some people, when they get older, they decide they don't wanna have children. They become, you know, there's a, there's a surgery for both men and women you can do. Uh, bodily mutilization through surgical sterilization for the purpose of contraception. So you have a surgeon do something to your body so you are incapable of conception or causing conception. So that comes under the fifth commandment as well. Verbal abuse, if you verbally abuse someone, um, you know, making fun of them, hurt their feelings. You know, you've seen stories in, in the internet about people who get made fun of on Facebook and other, you know, social media, and they, they commit suicide. It's unbelievable. So words can hurt, words can cause severe damage. And then there's physically attacking someone, being an unjust aggressor. Now you can defend yourself if someone attacks you, but to, to start a fight, and I'm guilty of that, unfortunately, I started a few fights in my younger days, and I feel very bad about that. And I, I still to this day, I get so upset when I think about it. And I pray for those guys that I, I hit. I punched them in the mouth, you know, I shouldn't have done that. But I was, you know, I was younger, I was a kid. I didn't know better. I hadn't really come to know the Lord yet. So then the sixth commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. So obviously there's adultery. Then under that comes, you know, pornography, immodest dress, dressing in a way that provokes impure thoughts. Um, uh, impure acts while alone, uh, in, uh, intimate physical contact with someone you're not married to, which is fornication, premarital relations, the sin of adultery, and, and also unnatural physical contact with those of the same gender. Um, so then there's stealing, lying, and also uh, the need for forgiveness. If you haven't forgiven everyone, sometimes I ask, have you forgiven everyone? And they're like, well, I'm working on it. So at least you're working on it. What do we say in the Lord's Prayer? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So the forgiveness of sins is important. Jesus on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit murder, also involves the call to forgiveness. And also when we're able to, to maybe give some alms to the poor. So you look at Matthew 25, when I was hungry, you gave me to eat. So the fifth commandment, you know, is about the needs of the body, you know, no abortion, no, no verbal abuse, no physical abuse, no damaging yourself through drugs and alcohol uh, and, and feeding your neighbor when you can and also, you know, granting forgiveness. So, so there's an intersection between the 10 commandments and the works of mercy. So we need to keep that in mind. So we go and bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been a week, two weeks, a year, whatever, since my last confession, my sins are. So you confess all the sins you've committed since your last confession, according to the Ten Commandments. I missed mass once, twice, many. I told a lie once, twice, or many. I was verbally abusive to someone once, twice, many, whatever. Then I give you a penance, like an Our Father or a Hail Mary. That's why we want you to know those prayers. Then you do your act of contrition, verbally expressing the sorrow that's within your heart because you need to be sincerely sorry in order to be forgiven. Because if you're not sorry, then you're, you're missing part of, the, part of the program. Then I will give you the absolution. I will say, I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. You will make the sign of the cross and you go out and you do your penance. Our Father, Hail Mary. So confession has different names. There's the confession part, which is the hardest, which is sort of like the crucifixion. You confess your sins. It's hard, but God calls us to that humility. He breathes on the apostles in the Gospel of John and says, receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive, they're forgiven, whose sins you hold bound or held bound. As my Father sent me, I send you. So he sends them with the power of forgiveness. And so that's the beauty of this sacrament. It's Jesus who's giving you the forgiveness. Verbally, you hear my voice, but it's Jesus who's giving you the forgiveness. So the priest's job is ultimately to be the conduit through which the grace of God flows from heaven to you, from Christ to you. 
So then we have the reconciliation. So you confess the sin, it's sometimes called the sacrament of confession. Confess the sin, then the reconciliation occurs. The priest gives you absolution, makes the sign of the cross, and then you go out and do your penance. And actually the official name of confession or reconciliation is penance. When you look it up in the catechism, it's called the sacrament of penance. So I'll be in there waiting for you to come see me, and I ask you, please do not deliberately conceal any sins out of embarrassment. Just go ahead and tell me what your sins are. No one's going to hear you. And again, I'm, I'm there trying to represent the mercy of God as best I can. I'm scared. I don't want to ever say the wrong thing to push someone away from God, away from the church, away from the sacrament of confession. So that gives you a little bit of a different perspective that I'm on that side and I'm worried about representing God. I need to make sure I represent God properly because I want you to go to heaven. God wants you to go to heaven. And I don't want me saying something wrong or stupid on my side to ever drive you away from God or the church. So please uh, try to feel at ease as much as you can. Come into confession, confess your sins, and receive the love of God that comes to you in the form of his mercy in this beautiful sacrament of reconciliation and penance. Jesus loves you. He wants to forgive your sins. He wants you to be in heaven with him. And this is one of the greatest ways that he offers this to you.